All right, let's get into this game. This is a bonkers game. Oh my gosh. All right, we're finally in. We're finally in. Let's go. So this is my first game of the day. I come in, I wake up, uh, I've gotten out of bed, and I've um, I've gotten myself a coffee and everything. But I've I've been uh, doing a casual morning. I think I did a little bit of achievements. But then I got on the ranked letter, right? This is my first ranked game of the day. And in this first ranked game of the day, I uh, encounter a crazy opponent. The very very aggressive strategy, and I was not ready for it at all. Let's reveal the map all. I'm going to show you my opponent's base because you're going to see what's happening with this opponent very, very quickly. We've got a Mongols, me. I uh, only play the Mongols at the moment. That's the only thing I know how to play or I've really taught myself very much about. I'll learn others eventually, but right now I'm playing the Mongols and I'm going to get a little bit of wood for some wheelbarrow before I get on cheap. It's a little build that Beastie taught me about, but... Here I'm going down for this Uvu, this poor Uvu, man. You're going to see something happen to this Uvu. And guess what's happening? Guess what's happening? We've got normal open. A normal open with these two scouts coming forward. But this base, this English base is going to look very different very soon. I'm really keen. This is the first time I'm watching this back. I want to see what the hell happens. Because that I see something very unexpected in the first couple minutes of this game. Stuff happens. There it is. Stuff happens quick. Look at this, guys. Look at this, guys. How many coming forward is that? Is that six? Six villagers coming forward. Six villagers coming right towards my town center. It's kind of nice that they path away from it. Let's just check their range of vision real quick. What have they scouted? They've scouted not my TC. Although they might know where it is. Maybe they saw where it is. I'm not sure. But um, let's get back to reveal map all. So we've got these four, six villagers coming forward. I did not scout these guys. I do not scout them. And I'm... Um, um, yeah, that's just showing there. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm pretty sure at this point. Yeah, my con's still going this way. And I believe one more build comes out. Because I find one. I find one. I don't find this mass. So these guys, right? Oh, this guy was a separate one. Okay, so I see this one Ville here. I'm like, hmm, something's up. What is this Ville doing here, you know? This turns out to be a place where um, both of us want to build some towers later on. This is a good spot for it. These guys, are, however... These guys are going around the backside. These guys I did not expect. This and all these sheep, these stick around here for a while. There's some crazy shenanigans. This becomes very crazy very quickly. There's so much aggression. The thing that I, I knew though, as soon as I saw these villagers, they're just about to come to my range of vision. They come in like right now and I'm like, oh no. Oh no. You know what's coming, right? You know what's coming, right? So we've got... <laughs> I'm doing a fast castle build. So my idea, right, is to get up to fast castle. It's not aggressive. It's very, um, like a 15-minute power spike at the fastest. It's going to take a while to get pumping. So I want to defend and try and do a greedy build up to castle age while defending. Um, I already have the three on gold, which is not helpful at all in this situation. I guess it will help me get up to the next age, but it definitely won't help me defend. There's nothing I can do with this gold this early in the game to defend myself with. I need food and wood to get myself some stables eventually. But for now, we have very aggressive five English villagers that can shoot with the bows if I try to fight them. And they are knocking down my Uvu with the scout as well. Now, down here at this base, we've got pretty much nothing. Now, I, I knew... The one thing that I could tell from this this game, I was like, oh no, I've got a very aggressive game. But they're going to be very behind in economy. They do make this mill, but I don't think they use it very much. I'm pretty sure they don't. So, as we see more villas, look how many, look how forward, look, look, look how all in this is. This is so all in, guys. How many villas are at home? How many? Two? Is that two villas? And no lumber camp. We're seeing zero lumber camps. I'm, I'm saying zero lumber camps. You're hearing me correctly. They are long chopping that wood. They are long chopping. They are carrying that lumber over and over. That's insane. <laughs> like, what the heck? And they're not even taking these berries. They're putting all their effort into taking out my Uvu, which is kind of smart. I do have a lot of power out of these Uvus as Mongols. But my gosh, is this an aggressive build. Very all in, because now we see these guys coming up the top. And we've got villagers about to put down towers, not only the back of my base, which are already down. I'm going to try to contest this, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to work very well for me. 
uh, and over here on the top. I'm pretty sure this goes up too. And uh, pretty soon in this match, I start to consider resigning. I'm pretty sure I've already considered it once already. You can see how much pressure this is. These English villagers are so hard to deal with in the Dark Age because they just can't be... Um, they can't really be contested in mass. They just have ranged attack. They can take on pretty much anything as long as you have enough of them. So here is when I do a really weird move. Here is when I'm like, okay, they've towered, they have towered my stuff. My villas are dying on that gold. I'm going to make a bit of a move. What I wanted to do is I actually wanted to put my TC in range of that tower and kind of shoot the tower down. I failed miserably at that. And I also it also meant that these berries... Oh, you know what it did? I, didn't, I Now I know why those berries weren't taken. Because these towers denied their berries. That's amazing for me. So it does mean they have these sheep. So that those sheep are actually even better than the berry income anyway. That's much faster. So it's actually kind of a good thing. I, <laughs> I kind of wish they were on those berries. It would have been easier for me now. But... Oh, dude, this is so old in. What I do know is that this guy's going to be an age one for a long time, you see. They're barely making villages. Let's have a look at their resources. Barely anything. Barely anything, right? I'm going up to the next age. They are most certainly not, and I don't think they will be for a while. Meanwhile, I found another stone. It is really lucky. They took out my first Uvu here with all these villages, right? They had a huge walk at the start of the game. That's a big, big nerf for your eco. But all I had to do was build another Uvu right over here. It's like five minutes later, right? Five minutes later, this Uvu is pumping out again, and boom, stable time. Um, and this is this is when I'm like, okay, I have a chance. I'm considering resigning. If I put Vils on, look at my Khan die. My Khan is dead. My Khan is not having a fun time. If I put Vils on my gold, the Vils will die. If I put Vils on my berries, the Vils will die. Look at this. I can't attack from any angle. I'm over here. Oh, well, I'm not over here. This is the minimap color is confusing the heck out of me. Look at this blue and blue and red, man. It's Age of, Age of Empires 4 is still got a very confused for watch recording games. I'll tell you that much. Look at <laughs> look at the colors, man, man. But regardless of Age of Empires 4 shenanigans, I've reached up to the next age, and I know that my opponent is going to take a while to get there. My opponent's not even made that lumber camp yet. They've only made two houses here at home, dude. I'm really liking my prospects economically, as long as I can keep defending. The really lucky part about all of this is not only did I have a stone here, is that I had the deer. I had deer right under my TC. This made the TC move really nice, because the TC move from here to my deer made all these deer just pretty much, like, guaranteed accessible. Um... At least for now, so I can get a ton of food income. One of the best food incomes in the game, really. Uh, unless I was, like, right next to a boar. But this, this is quite nice. I'll take this. I probably could have moved this girl, but, you know, this, this at least they think they're doing damage, I suppose. There's not really much else. I, can, I guess I could have moved it over there. That would have been a nice play. But over here is when I get really worried. This tower is now another time. I'm like, can I resign yet? <laughs> can, I, can I just leave? <laughs> and I just go away because we've got two towers over here not just one but two I'm just looking you can see me trying to build towers I've lost so many vills I've lost like three or four vills I know at least trying to build these towers I'm trying to build one here I'm desperately just trying to chop my only wood line because I know they've got a tower over here I could probably move this girl and chop this wood line but I didn't really consider that did I I'm, I'm just like well I need to do something but the one thing that I do have a lot of is stone now, this Mongol stone was a lifesaver. It meant I was able to get out enough early horsemen. Or, um, I actually upgraded that to just the horsemen. This is great. So, I've got four guys here. And that is actually enough to take out this tower. I, our post has 25 health. And these guys will be doing... But only, um... Can he check stats? This is another thing that was actually frustrating me. Um... I don't know if it was this game or another game, but you can't really check building stats once they're garrisoned. I assume they would have fixed that after like a year of the game being released, but apparently you still can't check like building stats unless... I don't know. I'm not sure if you, there's like something you can do to check a building stats. I wish you could. But here I am. I'm going to lose Vils. I'm assuming, yep, one other one's going down. I might lose two here because I'm desperate to get this tower up. Look at this. Another one down. Two Vil deaths. Look at this. I've lost so many villages. I've lost so many. I'm like, surely... The vill difference is that crazy. Can we have like an economy tracker? I don't know if there's an economy tracker here. But uh, Moon has 20, 24 units. What do I have? 20. I've got 20 units. I've got well less units than Moon at the moment. Probably less official ones. 
Not sure what happened to all these villages. Really not sure where they went. Um, only just getting onto the gold now. But look at this base. Like, there's still nothing. There's still no... There's still no age two, one, age 2 coming for red at all yet. Melon has still got no melons in terms of... Oh wait, actually, I'm wrong. Melon does have melons in terms of food economy. This explains the the 7 onto gold all of a sudden. They want to get up quick. They actually have a very unbalanced eco. They have more eco than I thought they would. Maybe that's from all these sheep here. Um, I'm not sure where these devils went. Maybe they, they came back here somehow. Or they just rotated around. So now they're putting out all their villas together to defend underneath this TC, which is a really smart play. Uh, underneath this tower, right? This tower here. Now, luckily, at the cost of at least three villages, it seems, I get this tower up, which is very needed, and this one. So I have two towers, which is really what you need to contest the opponent's towers. And now I'm like, well, I have to fight. I've got my horsemen, which is I've been upgraded to feudal age horsemen. They're not dark age horsemen anymore. They're feudal age horsemen. And they're actually going to do a great job against the villagers. They end up killing a lot of villagers. And I'm like, oh sweet, maybe I've got a chance. This is looking okay. We've got plus three versus siege. I'm not sure what that's about. But this is amazing. Look at this. This is such a good trade for me. My Khan comes out. Great timing. I think they just get a little bit of a, a buff. And they're going to come out. Deal so much damage to these villagers, man. These villagers have to run. They can't even kill one, one horse. I mean, well, they can, but just barely. And these towers are going to do work. I'm going to be able to ungarrison out of this, put these guys back to work. I didn't get this. Yeah, that's a mistake. I was supposed to click that, I suppose. But I couldn't because I had the stuff garrisoned in it. So because stuff is... When, gar when villages are garrisoned in units, you can't really use the unit. I'm not sure if it's the same with TCs, but towers, you can't, you can't use their abilities or upgrade them while they're... Well, or even look at their HP, I believe, while they have units in them. Even if you're the player. Even though this is not a spectate thing. This is a game thing. But anyway, this is when I was like, okay, maybe I'm throwing. I only noticed this halfway through. I realized all my horsemen, I've lost two just now. I, attacking this tower instead of this tower. When this tower is almost dead anyway. What I should have done right here, I would have actually saved myself so much time. And also like two horsemen probably. If I killed this tower first. But it's okay. I still managed to make that tower, that tower ignite. This tower is on its way down now. So it's okay. It's okay. We managed. So. Things are now looking a little bit better for me. These berries have been really, <laughs> this is really, really annoying me. I don't know if I scouted this or if I was just so blind to it. I must have, yeah, I must have just been really distracted to not even notice these berries. But over here at home, though, we have a different situation because there's no longer no eco. We've got a Britain's player, who, or a British player, sorry, who's actually expanding and actually making a whole lot of very scary longbowmen. Now these longbowmen are going to be, uh, going to be a a, a worry because enough longbowmen. I know very well enough longbowmen can completely destroy my horsemen. I've made so many horsemen against longbowmen, and it's gone just so badly for me. Longbowmen have like um have like a little have a free setup tool, as well as I think they have just like stronger than normal spearmen. English have normal stronger than spearmen and also stronger archers with like spikes and stuff. They're really 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 strong against horsemen. So. Even though I'm told that horsemen is what you're supposed to do. Oh wow, that, that was a bad play, wasn't it? I mean, I suppose I'm keeping Vils garrisoned. That was really the better thing to do. What I, all I need to do now is keep my eco going. Let's check my eco now. I've got 28 over here. What has this guy got? 24. So now the eco's actually switched. Now the eco's in my favor. What I did is I sent my my uh, calf back and dealt with that last tower. The um, cab, the cab was the right play here. If I made anything but horsemen, they wouldn't be doing anything to these towers. Like if I made spearmen, or if I made um, archers, they would be dying to these car these towers so quickly. But because I made these horsemen, because they've got the two PS armor, I think it's the only unit that could have dealt with this Britain attack with the Britain ranged units, the ranged uh, villages, the ranged towers. This horseman was the the saving grace. Having double horsemen is the only thing I think I could have done in this game. If I was any other Civ, I would have no idea what to do. I'm not going to lie. It was such a strong build. So now we have me with a few more villages and I think, right? No, the same, the same pop actually. Because this English player is starting to make a lot of units. This English player has made plenty of, uh, plenty of bowmen, I think. And actually mostly spearmen. 
a couple longbowmen. These longbowmen are really strong, but mostly spearmen, which is very smart for them. So I see the spearmen. Luckily, I see them early. You see this range going up with two bills. If I had one bill, this is big. If I had one bill on this range, now they continue to fight here, and they will continue to actually win this fight. If I had one bill in that range, that range never would have went up, and that would have been very different. Now I take a terrible fight. Actually, no. I take a better fight than I, than I could have, because I managed to garrison myself inside this tower. And now I've got a situation, because they're on my Ovu again. They were in my Ovu once, right? They've already screwed this one. So I built this new one. I built this new one. I had the Clutch Horseman. But now, we've got a new wave of army. They finally decided that they've got enough ego. To, they've got enough units to push out with a little army. And the, guess what? They do great, because they have mostly spears, and I've got mostly horsemen. I do a little dive. I do a bad dive when I've only got, like, two archers. It's really bold. And I'm, I'm like, I'm wasting so much time with these archers here. I think I could have taken much better trades. Um, Archers is a great play against these spearmen, but it is really hard to deal with these longbows. I think they've got more damage. They're just better. Look at this. Six versus light melee infantry. That's like, these guys are light range infantry. Okay. So we've got a bonus damage against the spearmen, but man, it's going to be hard to outrange these, uh, these longbows. I believe we've only got five. See, these guys have more attack. Literally, just more attack. They've got, they've got the built-in pal. Uh, what are these? Place palings versus versus the cav. Now they've got to run away. Luckily, I had just enough, and my Uber actually survived. Okay, so we've pushed back the first wave, but there are going to be more. I am worried they're just going to keep producing longbow, and that is exactly what they end up doing. Longbows are coming out, and that's really scary for me because if they have a critical mass of longbows, um, I have not teched into horsemen in a while. And even if I do make a couple of horsemen in response, it's a going to slow me down to castle age a ton because horsemen cost a lot of food. But also, they're going to just kill the horsemen if they have enough. If they have enough booze, these deer though, and eventually um, these berries, I suppose come in clutch and I can finally go to the next age. I don't even know how I managed to get up to the next age. I have a very strong eco, a uh, very lucky eco compared to this guy. Um, they ambushed me here and they ambushed me really well. I don't know how he didn't do much damage to that, that red army at all, but we, we barely managed to kill a spearman, it seems. I only run one dead body there. And I'm trying to make some units here, but I think this is a terrible fight for me. If I remember correctly, There's, these longbows are so much stronger. I don't think they have a blacksmith yet. They never make a blacksmith, which is interesting. I'm trying to make a blacksmith. I end up making a blacksmith pretty soon here, I think. But here in this big fight, I'm just going to get outnumbered. There goes my Uvu. Now I'm scrambling. Now I'm on the back foot. Now I'm truly being greedy with my FC it being really, really detrimental. I can't really make any units. I've got no eco. I've... Now I have, have a really, really bad situation with my production as well because I can't produce units. If, what am I going to build? Am I going to build archers? I need to upgrade them. That's going to take forever. I'm going to need like a two, at least two ranges to build that. I'm going to need at least like um, one stable up to make a to make my lances, right? But they've already got so many spears. I don't want to make lances against that many spears. I know that English spears are good, so I don't want to make stuff against English spears. What am I going to do? I'm going to make one barracks here, and eventually I'm going to make another barracks, because I've heard, I've heard from other players that the the thing to do here against the English all-in in Feudal Age is met at arms. Now, English have a very strong all-in. Usually this is what they do. They're going to make a uh, battering rams. Once they have the army advantage here, they can easily just snowball, make a couple battering rams. They've got a ton of wood, probably for this exact reason. Look at this wood. They're floating a ton of wood. This means they will be able to get battering rams once they get a blacksmith. I'm surprised I've not made a blacksmith yet. I think a blacksmith will be great for the English player right now. But this here is uh, a platinum one game, by the way. And, oh, they try to make it, that's right, they try to make a, a tower here, and luckily I've already made one. This is a preemptive tower right, that I just put up, so that was lucky as heck that I had that. Over here, though, we've got another tower battle. They're trying pretty much the same place as last time to build a tower, but I guess they forgot that I had these towers here. I was able to push the original towers off with my melee units. The horses, I think, are the best anti-tower unit. I'm so glad Mongols get horses, because they have... 
or the early horsemen because they are the best counter to early towers it seems. They have the pierce armor and the melee damage that can really take apart the towers and also when you're mongols you also get a little bit of food and gold when you destroy towers and when you destroy enemy buildings so that's also an amazing part of getting tower rushed as Mongols. Guess what? If you start to if you start to come back, if you destroy a couple towers, if you survive a little bit, you'll get free resources, and that's also probably the reason I got up. They were every time I was destroying one of these little towers, one of these English towers coming forward, I, my, me as Mongols was gaining bonus food from that. So and bonus gold, I believe. So. Now I know that they've probably got pretty all in the feudal age economy, although they do manage to they do manage to get up, I believe, which shocks me. I'm surprised how how well they kept in a pico, uh, eco behind this. They seem to be floating a lot of eco, but I think they played really well, um, having so much pressure. I was scrambling this whole game. You can see here I'm on the back foot. I'm not attacking one bit. I did send out my my dudes to do a little counter attack. I don't think I noted that super well when I did, but I did send out the horsemen to do a counter-attack. I was so worried about my situation at home, though. I think I just pulled them straight back home. I sent my four horsemen, and they don't really find anything, because uh, obviously there's nothing in this space. So, over here I am worried about this army, and this is the big Feudal Age army I've got to kill. They're running back. Now, this is them being very conservative. I wonder where they're going to go with this. It's not where I expect, it seems. So, now I'm, now I'm worried that this army is going to jump me. But it actually looks like they weren't even close. So I'm massing up my units and what I've Yeah, what I've got straight away is angled surfaces or the the second tech. So this is the this is the castle the Imperial Age one. I got that straight away. And now my my dudes have plus two armor. Plus two PS armor. They don't have any melee armor. They're not gonna go very well against other meta arms or lances. But man, that PS armor, this PS armor I think is what won me the game. You're gonna see me push forward now with these meta arms. They will get up to the next age very soon. Um, and I'm worried about it as well. This is also a threat. They've got a lot of vills forward. This is amazing how much eco they've like invested to this forward and also being able to to like have a fast castle time behind this. Having so much here is like really impressive there's just so much english numbers this was very very well played by my english opponent i think and now i'm like well okay i've got some spare army i've finally killed these towers they've came forward with so many towers they've pushed me off this stone and now i'm like well i need another uvu so i make this uvu over here back on my original uvu <laughs> i've switched uvus three times they've killed the original uvu they've killed my second uvu now i'm back to this uvu these guys are coming forward. They're probably going to destroy my Uru once again. Dude, my Uru's just don't get any rest. I think I'm going to lose my third Uru this game. And I'm, I'm forward here, but I'm not too worried because I know that I can just produce my plus two men arms. The biggest thing that's holding me back here, though, is that I'm not on my Uru. This Uru destruction over here has really pulled me back. I couldn't build my barracks on a good spot. So my barracks are only making one men arm every time. I've got so much stone I'm floating that I could be making double meta arms with, but now I just I can't even keep an Uvu up it seems. This is an amazing like hit and run. Now I've got a superior army, and my meta arms with the plus two PS armor. I, I it's just insane how much armor these guys have. They have as much armor as a knight I think. And this is just the the crazy part. Where in Age of Empires 2, you've got knights with a lot more armor than your meta arms, but your meta arms have the four PS armor, which is just as much as a knight. And that is more than enough to deal with the longbows. That means they're negating six damage. How much damage are they doing? Six plus one. That means they're going to do one damage per hit. That's that's like husk arrows. I'm pretty much making hu little husk arrows this game, which in Age of Empires 2 is a very anti-archer unit that you can infantry unit that you can make. That's not usually like the Age of Empires um, infantry units that are very weak against archers so i'm worried about this now i think that they run their army back and forget about it i keep my dudes here right and i'm worried i'm very scared but i'm i'm luckily i'm doing enough damage in this base where i'm like okay hopefully they're distracted enough at this point because this is what i figured my meta arms as soon as you get these enough like plus six dudes if they're not contesting the army in your base just run them straight into the tc guess what they've got 15 people in this tc and they i'm idling 15 villagers am i losing meta arms Barely, they, they're they dying so slowly, and I didn't even have to raid because 15 villagers are just being completely idled in the TC. 
Um, Age of Empires 4 is a game I'm still still pretty new to. I, I've only lost one game so far. This, this is my seventh ranked game, I think. Um, seventh ranked game since they introduced ranked, and um, it was a really fun one. So that was that was a crazy game, dudes. I really, really enjoyed that one. That was, I think, the craziest Age of 4 game I've ever had. And I uh, really enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Um, probably going to put this on YouTube. Uh, I, I had to sit for like half an hour after this game. I was sweating. I was talking about it. I was not shutting up about it. My, my palms were sweating, dude. I was still thinking about that game so long after. I had to resist so hard against those towers. I know there's probably been pra crazier games out there in Age of Empires 4, but for me, that one got my heart pumping like nothing else I've seen in Age of Empires in a while. That was really an exciting game for me, so I just wanted to share that with everybody. Well, that was a pretty fun one. Right, that's all done. I did that, did that big cost. It's fitting, yeah. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Now the question is, do I want to do it again? <laughs> do, I, do I really want to risk it again? Because I'm going to get plat players, and plat players are pretty hard opponents, man. I like these platinum, these platinum items. Do I want to lose the, like, a platinum kraken? Not really, although... Like, and do I want to have to fight one of those games every game in order to get one of them? Like, that's kind of scary, you know? That's a kind of scary thought, you know? <sighs> what to do, guys? What to do?